Okay. Good morning. Because it's the month of October, we're going to say a decade of the rosary um, before Mass starts. Okay. Let's see. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our yeah. name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. We'll do the rest. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. How many times did you? Ten times. <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning. We are so grateful to the pilgrims who brought from England the sunshine back to Scotland. Although I heard they had plenty of rain down there, but thank you for the effect of your suffering. And I hope you did uh, relax and rejoice as a community. We were praying for you for, and we were rejoicing together with you, although we were also a little bit sad that we couldn't go. Hopefully next time there'll be a bigger bus and more people can sit. Of course, we are praying for one another. We are thanking the Lord for our community. Today, we are invited to pray and think about the brothers and sisters from Sri Lanka as we celebrate the uh, World Mission Sunday and Caritas Internationalis, but also our ski of here in Scotland and our parish will join. So today, we will be using the prayer of faithful. You will have also these leaflets and next Sunday, we'll be able to give because we'll be prepared to share for those in need. So at the beginning of this celebration, let us recognize that we need uh, healing, that we need God's mercy, and let us together profess our sins, saying, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth is to people of good will. We praise you. Lord God, heavenly King. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed <clears throat> at Cyrus, whom he has taken by his right hand to subdue the nations before him and strip the loins of kings, to force gateways before him that their gates be closed no more. It is for the sake of my servant Jacob of Israel, my chosen one, that I have called you by your name, conferring a title, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, unrivaled. There is no other God besides me. Though you do not know me, I arm you, that men may know that the rising of the setting of the sun, that apart from me, all is nothing. The word of the Lord.
The second reading is a reading for the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. From Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church in Thessalonica, which is in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, wishing you grace and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We always mention you in our prayers and thank God for you all, and constantly remember before God our Father how you have shown your faith in action, worked for love, and persevered through hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We know, brothers, that God loves you and that you have been chosen, because when we brought the good news to you, it came to you not only as words, but as power and as the Holy Spirit and as utter conviction. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Uh, Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went away to work out between them how to trap Jesus in what he said. And they sent their disciples to him together with the Herodians to say, Master, We know that you are the honest man and teach the way of God in an honest way and that you are not afraid of anyone because a man's rank means nothing to you. Tell us your opinion then. Is it permissible to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus was aware of their malice and replied, You hypocrites, why do you set this trap for me? Let me see the money you pay the tax with. They handed him a denarius, and he said, Whose head is this? Whose name? Caesar's, they replied. He then said to them, Very well, give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God, what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. The phrases that end this piece of the Gospel of Matthew uh, with these phrases that are famous and not only in Catholic or Christian religion but really they became part of the human patrimony. That was just such a great answer. Out of this world. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. And really it was Son of God, Jesus who was filled with the Holy Spirit after his baptism in Jordan, that really he was assisted by the Holy Spirit to give that answer, such an answer to such a trap. You see how they started? Master, we know that you are honest. We know that you're great. They started, you know, to kind of like in this political or diplomatic games. And these Pharisees, they were very good at that. Oh, top of the world. And Jesus said, hypocrites, why do you set this trap for me? Filled with the Holy Spirit, he was able to find an answer that, wow, out of this world. How often am I asking Holy Spirit to give me assistance? How often you do that when you have a difficult issues to solve? 
how often we pray and we ask that he might come. He was given us at the baptism. Then on the confirmation, we received the gifts of the Holy Spirit. How often we use it. You know, me personally, I often find that I do the answer and then I think, oh my God, I should have said it totally different. That would be the thing that I should say. It's often after my tongue is just exploding with my opinion. Usually wrong. Usually too quick. And I say, my goodness. And that's, that's the fact. If I would say my goodness and I say, oh, come Holy Spirit, help me. Stop me for a while. Give me a second of pause. You know, I had the privilege to meet with uh, John Paul II and what a uh, couple of times when I was a student in Rome. And when I was, the conversation with him was really, he was listening intensively. And all, only occasionally and very shortly he would kind of say one or two words. Uh, like he was very attentive. I, I was just, you know, you wanted to go and talk and, and you've you seen that he was just listening. But maybe with time he mastered that, that, you know, you just pick up, you just grow, you mature and then you say something. I wish I would have that uh, quality. What about you? We all have a time and maybe this is the moment to say, Holy Spirit, help me, work in me, give me a right answer, or give me this pause when I don't need to tell, because these words will hurt more than it will heal. And that's really a wisdom, and I think uh, that's what struck me from this gospel today. Of course, he realized that they were hypocrites, but then the answer he gave was fantastic was very true and maybe as the scholars say it was the first time that is no longer either Caesar or God but Caesar and God each one on his appropriate level it is the beginning of separation of religion and politics which until then had been inseparable among all peoples and regimes and it was also inseparable in thinking of Pharisees they were doing politics they were not doing the will of God so it's important that we do the will of God in our life, in our personal life, in our parish life, that we will pray to understand what God wants from us. We'll be having the parish council meeting, and I encourage you all to pray that we might find the best way what God wants from us in this parish, for this time, in this situation around us in the world. And of course, here, Jesus and Pharisees talk about the taxes to be paid. And of course, it was a very, very touchy topic because, you know, they paid the taxes to the occupants, to the Romans, who were the ones who occupied Judea, Israel, and they were hated. Yet, Jesus said to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And the catechism of the Catholic Church reminds us that tax evasion when it reaches certain proportions, is a mortal sin equal to every other grave act of theft. It is stealing, stealing from the state who should provide for the people, for the poor, who should make these uh, potholes in our roads less frequent. And after the rain, we see how many of them are there around, and so on. So this Christian cooperation in building a just and peaceful society does not stop at paying taxes, of course, but it's a very important for Christian, but also for every honest person. But we must also extend itself to promotion of common values, such as the family, but also defense of life, solidarity with the poor, what we do for the care of the creation, what we do being involved for the peace. On last Friday, I celebrated the mass that was offered here for the peace in Middle East, in Gaza and Israel, and for the end of the war in Ukraine. And next Friday, we'll be repeating the same mass, and I'm so grateful for that. We need to pray. We do not need to forget about that. These people suffer. Somebody is using their power and there, of course, we need to do all we can in the sphere of the politics to promote the things that we believe in. 
like changing this situation that half of the world is exploited, like changing this situation of the dramatic climate change uh, emergencies. And all of that starts with that, that we need to give to God what belongs to God. And he said that we should love one another, that we should be good to others and caring for others. So we should ask the Holy Spirit that he will give us an answer and he would teach us to keep quiet when we have an answer so quick, so rapid, and sometimes not merciful maybe, or not just. Me and you, we have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I was able yesterday to be part of an Alpha course participants and more than 50 of them have met in our church for last weeks and they came for the weekend and uh, there was over 50 all together. And yesterday there was a prayer for this recognizing the gifts of the Holy Spirit and I took part of that. And that's why maybe I just in this gospel found such a powerful message. Holy Spirit will give you a good answer, will give me a good answer. Do I listen? Am I open? Am I, am I the one who wants to receive that gift? Uh, I have to confess, I'm not always ready. I have my own answers. I have my own uh, thinking. Well, and as God says, my ways are not your ways. And God's thinking is not your thinking. Well, that's enough. The Holy Spirit tells me not to talk too long because when people see speaking, a priest talking too long, they are annoyed. And when we speak short, everybody is smiling. You are smiling so nicely. Very good. So now let us stand and with joy and with pride because we believe in the risen Lord. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God. On this World Mission Sunday, we are called to bear witness to the risen Christ who walks with us on our journey of faith. Let us now ask for God's grace and offer our petitions as part of our duty to pray for the church and the world. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, the first missionary of the church, and for the bishops and clergy of Scotland, that they may accompany and strengthen God's people with holiness and wisdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For ourselves, that on our journey together through life, we may experience the presence of the risen Christ among us and be filled with courage to proclaim the good news to the world. May we also show solidarity with our brothers and sisters in those places where the church is small or poor through our support of Missio Scotland. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our society and the world, that there will be justice, especially for the poor and disadvantaged, and peace for those who are caught up in war famine, or natural disasters. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are sick, that they may be given the grace to bear witness to the faith in their sufferings and be comforted by our prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
for our deceased relatives and friends, and for those missionaries who gave their lives to proclaim the gospel message overseas. Especially those who came from our own communities here in Scotland, may they experience eternal peace and the reward for their witness to the faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who are on this sick list. Some of them need our prayer and our uh, help uh, and help of the Holy Spirit, the healing of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord work through the decisions of the doctors, through the caring of the families who sometimes are getting so emotional because they care, because they want that the things will get better. Merciful Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We are praying for those who died and we want to remember Karl Romanski, Betty's dad, who died last week. And also I want to pray for Janina Litvin, uh, for whom this Mass has been offered. And we also add all the brothers and sisters who need our prayer, who need our remembrance. And of course, we will be remembering them in the whole month of November. But right now we say, eternal rest. Grant unto, unto them, them, O Lord, Lord and, let and let perpetual light shine on them. them. May, May they, they rest, rest in, in peace. peace. Amen. Amen. If somebody wants to add your own intention, that's now the time to say it out loud or maybe in the silence of your heart. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our Father, we give you thanks for the gift of our faith. Continue to inspire us to bear witness to your Son by building up your church. Accept these prayers we make in the power of the Holy Spirit and grant them through your Son, Jesus Christ, Redeemer of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Holy Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that the people formed as one by the unity of the Holy Trinity may be the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit. Might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels and saints, remember the Pope and all the others who are uniting for the synod on synodality. We praise you and with joy we proclaim You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he set the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, 
one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, her glorious martyrs, and with St. Ninian and St. Triduana, the patron saints of our parish, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, and Leo our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at the passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus is here with us, with the Holy Eucharist, and he's inviting all the children close to him. So please come forward. You've done a wonderful job during the children's liturgy. Thank you for this uh, work done. Oh, what enthusiasm they are coming for. We can learn from them, of course. Now you turn, you turn, and you put your hands up, up, up to heaven. Who wants to join? Oh, yes, we have one more. Fantastic, very good. Up to heaven, we put our hands, and together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now we turn here because here is Jesus. We just show with our hands a big respect for Jesus. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Now Jesus is smiling to you. Please smile back. Oh, fantastic. Show me your teeth. Were they washed this morning? Oh, yes, they were. Okay. Now let's wave to one another and let's wave to all the church. Go back. Oh, yes. And wave with the whole power of the Holy Spirit. And now you go to your mom and dad to share the gift of the peace of the Lord to all the congregation. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Pokój z wami.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy.
Thank you for the beautiful music. Thank you, ladies, for your service and everyone who prepared and helped with the Eucharistic service and with all the other services to make this liturgy smooth, also the children's liturgy. It's so good that we are working together and we are asked to help those who are poor, who are in need. So please take with you those informations about We Are Missions, about the World Mission Sunday. Read it. There are envelopes as well. And next Sunday, there'll be a second collection for the needs of these brothers and sisters uh, who need it this time uh, from this World Mission Sunday initiative. Uh, we still should continue to pray for uh, Pope Francis and all those who are on this Synod on Synodality that they will bring a, a fruit uh, of the Holy Spirit. And we have this fantastic prayer on the back of our bulletin. And if we would take these bulletins and go on the back, if we would say that prayer together, we will really answer to the request of the Pope Francis to pray, to assist, to be active part of that church uh, searching for the new ways to serve better the people and the world. So together we say, we stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us. Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down to wrong path. Not partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Please take home your bulletins and also pray, if you can, more often this prayer for the Synod on Synodality. And we will meet next week, uh, next Sunday, with the children who start the preparation for the sacraments. So we think it will be more crowded as there will be the first of the rites to uh, start this preparation of the sacraments next Sunday. And one thing, uh, seeing the fantastic group of travelers, pilgrims going with the uh, bus, I said, well, we have to do something in our Polish community. So today, with this beautiful sunshine after our mass, we'll have this tradition to continue to go to San Triduana well. It's a short pilgrimage. We'll do it saying rosary, but I am very happy most of our people never been there. So I'll be really delighted to bring them there and to make them aware that San Triduana uh, really was a very, very uh, famous, well-known um, saint and Uh, this place was a place of healing, of healing of those who suffered all these diseases of ice, but also many others. So we really should rediscover that the beauty of this ancient saint from the 4th and 5th century who brought here with others the relics of St. Andrew and then the rest of her life, the last years of her life, she spent here at Restalry. So she was local. She is our patron saint. And I think through her intercession and through the intercession of Our Lady, who is a patron of the whole month of um, October, let us pray for those who are ill. Some of them need the healing, need the uh, power of the Holy Spirit in their life. So please stand and together we will say for all those who are ill, who are in need of any kind of healing, Hail Mary, full of grace, The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and protect you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
my dear sisters and brothers, if somebody of you would like to join us at 1 p.m. to go to this San Chiduana well, which is next door, you're more than welcome, of course, with this beautiful weather, if you'd like to join. But I think you've been to this place already, you know it, but if anybody would like to join, you're more than welcome. We'll just go there, pray the rosary, and visit the shrine of St. Triduana in St. Margaret's Church.